a lot of people world. are scared to trim their pets' nails at home because, of course, you trim it back too far, as we say in you the South. You hurt them. It bleeds like a stuck pig. Right. right. They say it's out, it bleeds like bleeds a stuck like pig. A bleeds pig. like a stuck pig. Bleeds like a stuck pig. Right. So, and it looks bad, but if you think you can do it, try it at home. If you're not comfortable with it, have your a groomer do it, have your veterinarian do it. But if you're comfortable, you can get a nail trim from the pet store, a nail trimmer. And what you want to do is, I'm sorry, yeah. Okay, okay, we'll yeah, just, yeah, we'll just talk let's about it, okay? We'll just talk about it. <laughs> we'll use Dr. Franz. No! <laughs> um, you just want to make sure you get the tip off. Come right, here. Right. Come if here. it's a dark nail, you can't see the pink oh. part on a light okay. nail. That's a light okay. nail, you can see. That's but... okay, come here. <laughs> Sorry, lovey. Oh, little lovey. Yeah. We were getting, we were getting Good wrong. job, Will. We were getting along so well before that. <laughs> now, uh, honestly, it's very easy to see where their nail ends and the nail bed yes. begins. And you just have to be really careful. It will Absolutely. bleed a lot. Absolutely. And it is painful. Yeah. 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 And yeah. if it happens, yeah. there, there are products. If it happens, it, you know what? There are products you can get at the store, but if you're at home and you have some flour and your pet's nail bleeds, just put a little flour you on there and stop it right away. Yes, blood, right? exactly. Right. And a big hug, really, really big hug afterwards. Big hug and a treat. And it's okay. I don't think, I don't think Lovey's gonna let me give her yeah. a big hug. <laughs> Lovey, you're off of Lovey's yeah, Christmas love you list. I'll tell you that. And then another but, option for trimming nails, if it's not allowed, Dremels. Yeah, those well, are cool. Yeah. Look at this baby. <laughs> Don't you want to take this handsome fella? Don't you want to take him home? Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hi, hi James. So good. Hi, James. So, good. so what James is going to do, James is answer. going to be our palpation patient. Yeah. <laughs> and palpate is, yeah, you know, gonna... what we do when we palpate, you palpate a little differently than I do, I'm sure, <laughs> but we're feeling for abnormalities. And so I tell my, my clients, not my patients, to palpate their pets or love on their pets, heavy petting. So you just <laughs> to want really to feel for any abnormalities for anything. If keep on You need to know what your pet's <clears throat> normal is. Okay. So if you feel something abnormal, if there's a tick, if there's a small lump, you'll know, you can contact your veterinarian and then you can decide whether you watch it or you do something. How often should you do it? I would say do it at least two or three times a week. Don't do it every okay. day because it's, it's better if you put a few days behind. That way you can tell if there's no. a growth, if it's getting larger or anything's changing. Sure. And what happens a lot of times is when people don't do that, by the time we see it, um, you know, Sometimes you can't do anything it or it's too, too late. Right, yeah. Right. Yeah.